introduce a little anarchy. Upset the established order, and everything becomes chaos. Hello guys, and welcome to another episode of Real Talk. This is part of the Real Emotion podcast <laughs> and the uh, Real Anarchy website. And that's Real Anarchy, R-E-E-L, not real, R-E-E-L. <laughs> All right. So make, before we proceed, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell button below. So that way you are notified every time we upload a video. We are constantly uploading videos and we're giving you a lot of content and we are going to ramp up on uploading videos almost every day. So well, not almost every day, but we're going to try to be consistent so that way you are notified every time uh, we upload a video. And so that way you was, you are always on the known and, you know, you're in. <laughs> All right. So today I'm going to be talking about a quick, uh, a quick real talk about what's going on with J.J. Abram. Uh, J.J. Abram, if you know him uh, or familiar with him, he's the man that... Uh, created uh, Cloverfield and uh, Lost, and this is something. And, and this is got this is a guy that everybody was bidding for, and, and that's there were a lot of studios that were on a bidding wars, but uh, the only two studios that actually were really going at it to get him in this bad rob robot uh, uh, production company was Warner Brothers and Apple. Apple is uh, in Warner Brothers above. Are trying to get into the streaming service arena. Uh, they're trying to dethrone Netflix, and uh, and at the same time, you know by now that Disney is also in the process of deploying his, their own streaming service. So they don't want to be left behind on the streaming uh, rush, uh, gold rush. <laughs> so and one of the things that uh, uh, that they want to do is want to make sure or secure that they have content because although they possess a huge library this is something that they they want to make sure that they have the talent to create a uh, good content and this and, and, and jj abram has been known to create great content um, this man rebooted uh, the whole uh star trek star trek was almost uh, virtually nowhere to be found only on tv shows and reruns until he came along and rebooted the whole the whole franchise and right now it's in flux i think they are shooting the next one the next one but uh at the same time he also uh brought forward uh kind of rebooted or uh, uh re-energized the star wars uh movies um he's right now shooting another one which is gonna come out later this year and from what we've seen everybody's excited about it, 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 it He's bringing back a lot of things that made the movie great. Some of the stuff that were taken away in the previous one, and now he's bringing it back. But we're not going to talk about that. That's for another episode. But we want to want to focus is that he's going to be a key player on, on on franchises. You know that the studios are very big on franchises. They right now we're playing around with the uh, monster uh, monsterverse, and that's uh, an IP right now that is not doing so well. And probably they cannot get a hold on what's really uh, not working for them. And probably he can come and step in and and, and oversee that, or or give his uh, uh, you know his two cents on how can make how to make it better. And uh, and you want somebody like that on your side. And at the same time, he the the studio is it's a little bit struggling with also with the Harry Potter uh, movies. Um, and that's another that's another franchise that they are investing a lot of money and in time, and they want to make sure that it's successful and bringing him bringing him on board to do oversee that or at least uh, uh, be a part of the producing team or a producer uh, for these movies. Uh, also, will generate um, uh, will will give them a sense of uh, security given with the experience that he already has with uh, Mission Impossible. I mean, Mission Impossible, after their second or third one, they weren't doing that great until he stepped in and kind of uh, did his magic. And now, right now, the movie is doing... I mean, you, you already know the news that they already announced in the next three movies, I think it is. And so he knows uh, a, thing or two, uh, a thing or two about... Uh, movies and uh, rebooting franchises and, and doing and putting everything in place to make things uh, work cohesively. Another thing that I was talking about uh, that well, a lot of people are talking about is that 
uh, the DCU. That's uh, something that everybody thinks, oh, he's going to be the savior of the DCU. You know, yeah, he can be. Um, I don't see that happening anytime soon. That is something that I, I talked about with John uh, yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this, the podcast that we recorded uh, is not going to be <laughs> you guys are not going to be able to view it. That's why I had to do this real talk real fast for you guys. But um, yeah, I don't believe that he's going to do anything uh, with the DCU anytime soon. Um, I mean, this is still I think that the whole DCU is trying to find its uh, its identity uh, after all the pieces have been moved. Uh, ben is no longer there. They, uh, they already cast a new Batman. This new Batman uh is likely not to be connected to the already existing uh, superheroes. So all these things, I feel like he's going to be part of uh, rebooting. Uh, I think he's going to allow this movie to work its, its way out of the system, for lack of a better word. But I think that's when he's going to step in and probably he's going to be able to reboot. And um, he's not going to try to... Probably he will uh, try to direct one or two movies. We don't know that. Uh, he could... He could even very well say tomorrow I'm gonna direct the next Superman movie, um, but again it's all speculation. I, I do not believe that's what's gonna happen. I think he's gonna be his main focus is gonna be to establish himself, um, making um, movies for the streaming service or the movie or uh, theaters, and uh, also establish a couple of TV shows that are uh, originals that are gonna be part of the streaming service, which is something that is imperative for this type of. Uh, business to succeed and I believe that uh, DC streaming service that is already out there it, it was kind of a beta version of what we're gonna get and I think that was uh, Warner Brothers trying to test the waters uh, how uh, how to manage this uh, this type of uh, vi- business endeavor which they never been part of before so I think this is gonna be good this is gonna be good for the streaming service Warner Brothers as a whole and even for the DCU fans if they, if he decides to if he decides to start to take on one of the characters one of the ones I'm hearing a lot is uh, Green Lantern uh, I don't know maybe uh, Superman or Justice League whatever it is it, whatever the man does I think it's gonna be fine because he's he's really good at what he does and uh, another thing that I want to talk about is um, uh, Endgame. Endgame is getting uh, re-released, but it's not really being re-released because the movie right now, uh, if you go to Box Office Mojo, the movie's still in theaters. It's like in 1,200, 1,300 movie theaters, so that's not a real real, real re-release. <laughs> so um, I, I feel like this is like a petty move because we know that the movie it might not reach the, uh, or beat the daddy of all movies, Avatar which is holding the number one spot as the biggest earner of all times. And um, and I think this is just a way to kind of weasel its way into that, which I think is weak, but it is what it is. You know, they're in the business of making money. They want to be known as the as the biggest box office of, uh, of all time. I mean, you know, if I was Feige, which I'm not, uh, I think they're doing a disservice. I think whatever it is that they, they're they going to do, they should just release it to the public. I mean, this movie made almost, I mean, an insane amount of money when it first came out. It's, it's a record that's not going to be broken for the next 10, 20 years because this this was the culmination of 20 movies that were already, already established uh, to make this one the pinnacle of their shared universe. So... Something like that probably not going to get replicated anytime soon. And I don't think any other movie is going to hit that kind of numbers on one weekend. But you never know. The thing is, uh, I, I feel that they shouldn't do this. I think it's petty. I think it's, it's, um, it's, it's not something that <laughs> that I think it should be. it's going to be worth my time. I would not go into the movies to, pay, to spend another $15 per, for me and just to see a couple of cutaway or... or deleted scenes which it makes no sense this this only should happen whenever there's a anniversary of the movie or they want to re-release extended version or you know like like something like that when, like what happened with bbs uh, we got when the dvd came out we got an ex- the extended version with 30 extra minutes then you know i think if they want to do that then re-release it with 30 extra minutes or whatever it is 
I will go see it. But if you're gonna go and tell me that you're just gonna have a one deleted scene and a couple of other little things that are part of a kind of a Blu-ray extras, it makes no sense. But you know, guys, tell me what you guys think. I'm really interested to know what you guys think about this. Uh, what do you think about JJ joining the WB? And what do you guys think about this move by Kevin Feige and the Marble Lights? <laughs> uh which whatever you think uh please comment below engage me you know i always respond and make sure you hit like subscribe share our content and hit that bell button so that way you always notify and you can always reach me on twitter uh by the name below all right guys so until next time peace introduce a little anarchy upset the established order and everything becomes Yes. Yeah.